because I'm an astrophysicist and I really want to care about getting the right ideas across. I'm an outreach astrophysicist, so when you watch one of my pieces, I want you to develop the right mental model. And I'm going to give you a few examples. Well, first of all, I come from Hubble. We're the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. We run the science program of Hubble, so I got some really great data to play with. And it's not just me. Here is our team uh, holding a piece of IMAX film. There are four of us that do all of these wonderful visualizations. Um, and the two on the left are the primary image processors. You have them to thank for all the beautiful Hubble images that you see. They're the two primary images processors. So what we do a lot of is illustrate Hubble press releases. And so here is a press release on the Monkey Head Nebula. And we're going to zoom into it, Hubble's visible light image of the Monkey Head. And then we're going to crossfade to a new infrared image. And then to give you perspective on that, we're going to pull back on that infrared image and show you a plausible interpretation of that in 3D. It's also available in Stereo 3D on our website if you have a Stereo 3D viewer. So the idea here is to make sure people recognize that these Hubble images are not 2D picture postcards. They are instead representations of a 3D universe. Now, I'm not going to be as ambitious as my panel uh, mates here. I'm only going to try and tell you two stories here. And my first story is about galaxies. This is my, one of my favorite galaxies. There are so many really wonderful ones. This is the Whirlpool Galaxy, which has the classical prototypical spiral pattern. But you'll also notice it has that small dwarf galaxy in the background there on the upper right. Now, galaxies often have come in pairs, but sometimes those galaxies come through and they come smashing together. They rip each other apart in titanic galactic collisions. And we want to get that idea across to the public. Well, we, take, we do, of course, do supercomputer simulations of them, and as they appear in the Astrophysical Journal, they look like this. This is not something that's going to excite the public. This is, uh, you know, this is the kind of graph that only an astrophysicist could love. So if I take data from a simulation like this, and I try to present it as the particles in the end body simulation, you can see that you see a whole bunch of dots there, right? But that's not what's really being computed in the simulation. As someone who did computer simulations myself, I've done these smooth particle hydrodynamic simulations, and each particle is not a dot. Rather, it is a cloud with a density function. So what I did is I went, I took this, and I designed a shader in RenderMan to accurately represent the density function of these three-dimensional clouds. And instead of having these dot-to-dot -dot plot, oh, I actually, here's, here's the shader itself. It's a, Gauss, it's a variation on a Gaussian splat, and it has a, it's only a 2% difference from what the actual 2D projection of the smoothing kernel is in the SBH simulation. So you go from those dot to dots on the top to an actual something that looks much more like a galaxy on the bottom. You can see the spiral arms. It's the exact same data, but it changes the way because of the way I have rendered it. I have taken careful, been careful to put the science accurately into the visualization. Not only for the gas particles, but also um, more structure show up in the star particles than I expected. Here we have those two galaxies coming together and then they smash together and create these big tidal tails in the visualization. But let's take it a little bit further, because for Hubble's 18th anniversary, we released a press release with 59 galaxy interactions. And these galaxies are in all stages of galaxy, uh, galaxy collisions. So I chose several of them, and in the upper left you see two galaxies that are coming together, and then on the upper right they're smashing through one another, and then the tidal tails develop, and then they merge back together. So I went back to that visualization I had done previously, and I identified the stages in that visualization that roughly corresponded to these uh, stages of, of the collision. And then I wrote a new software tool to allow me to do 3D visualization on the fly, interactive, and find the perspective that would match roughly the Hubble images. And then I put together this visualization, which I call simulations versus obstacles. Movie's not playing. Oh. Now it's playing. I'm sorry, it's not playing on my monitor. Alright, so this is simulation versus observations. So these two galaxies come together, and if you pause it here, you can see that that, that matches this Hubble image. Alright, same simulation, turn time back on. One galaxy comes buzzsawing straight through the other. 
cut, but hold it right there. Now spin that around. You can see how it matches this whole image. Again, turn time back on in the simulation. The tidal tails develop relatively quickly, at least on galactic time scales, as we can see in this Hubble image. And then the center of the galaxies are where the mass is concentrated. So the galaxies will come smashing back together. The cores will come together. And when viewed from a skew angle here, we get that sort of cursive Q shape as seen in this Hubble image. 